I'm Amanda Taylor. I am a neurologist here at Southeast Veterinary Neurology. So a spinal fracture is when we've actually had damage to the bones of the spine, which are called vertebrae. This typically occurs in dogs and cats secondary to a traumatic event, such as being hit by a car, falling from a height, or depending on where you live, perhaps an encounter with a horse, kicked by a horse. That's what we often see. In addition to fractured or broken vertebrae, we can also see dislocations or subluxations of the vertebrae because they are connected to each other by joints. So sometimes a traumatic event will actually cause the vertebrae to separate from each other, which causes a bend in the spine and pressure on the spinal cord. So signs of a spinal fracture or an injury to the spine causing a spinal subluxation or luxation are those that we will see with other spinal cord injuries, being painful, difficulty walking, or lack of coordination. If significant enough, an animal may have urinary or fecal incontinence. And very often, because spinal fractures and subluxations are due to trauma, there's other evidence of trauma on the patient, such as road rash or wounds on the skin, sometimes difficulty breathing if there's been trauma to the chest. So after initial evaluation and stabilization of patients that come in on emergency for spinal trauma resulting in fracture or subluxation of the vertebrae, we typically proceed with a neurologic exam to determine what their current level of function is. And following that, when we suspect spinal trauma, we perform radiographs or x-rays of the spine to evaluate the bones of the spine and their alignment to determine if we can detect any abnormalities. This is a relatively good test for larger fractures or fractures where the bone is actually displaced or larger luxations. But unfortunately, radiographs are only accurate in detecting spinal fractures and luxations in about two thirds of cases. So if a fracture is not detected and we need a diagnosis, we will often proceed to advanced imaging of the spine, including CT or MRI of the spine. Prior to anesthesia, we would typically be doing full blood work on these patients to make sure that despite the fact that trauma has happened, this patient is still stable enough to go under anesthesia. So the decision on how to treat a spinal fracture or left subluxation is based on several factors. One is the status of the patient as far as how it is doing neurologically, whether or not it can walk, whether or not there is decreased ability to move the limbs, or whether or not we're actually starting to lose sensation. If a patient has lost sensation secondary to a spinal fracture or spinal trauma, the prognosis for improvement with treatment, no matter which course we proceed with, is relatively grave, so it can affect treatment decisions. Our treatments for spinal fractures and luxations are often surgical in cases where the spine has become unstable as a result of the fracture of the bone that has occurred or as a result of the luxation of the spine. In some cases, despite the fact that there is a fractured or broken bone or a subluxation, the spine is still relatively stable held in place. And those are cases that we often rest for several months and with the addition of pain meds and physical rehabilitation, work to get them back to a great life again. Prognosis with spinal fractures is purely dependent on how the patient presents initially in their neurologic status. As long as the patient has sensation in their limbs, their prognosis is good for a recovery with the treatment path chosen. Unfortunately, for patients that have lost the ability to feel their legs due to a spinal fracture, this indicates that the spinal cord itself has actually been severed as a result of the injury, and the patient will not walk again, regardless of which treatment course we choose. Due to the complex nature of these injuries and the important structures that are involved, such as the spinal cord, we recommend referral to experts in the spine, veterinary neurosurgeons who can help to choose the correct treatment path and results in the best outcome for your loved one.